the Reedy River here in Greenville, South Carolina in our Sweet 16 matchup with the number one team in all the land and the National Player of the Year from last season. Aaliyah Boston leading the way for the Gamecocks against the Bruins and Charisma Osborne. And welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Carolina undefeated, including a win earlier this year over UCLA. The Bruins, the four seed, looking for the stunner here this afternoon. The winner of this one advances to face the two seed Maryland. That's on the left side of your bracket. And this is what you're up against when you face the unbeaten Gamecocks winners of 40 in a row, dating back to last year's national championship. Their offense, 81 points per game. Their defense, possibly the best in the history of the game. And they're blowing people out by about 30 points per day. Hi, everybody, and welcome courtside. I'm Beth Mowens. We've got Debbie Antonelli, also Angel Gray with us. And not only was Aaliyah Boston the best offensive player last year, the best defensive player as well. And I do think they are the best defensive team possibly we have ever seen, anchored by the play on the inside of the 6'5 senior Aaliyah Boston. She can score around the block, but she is menacing on the defensive end. She blows up their ball screen coverages. She runs the floor hard. She rebounds and gets them into their transition game. There are so many stats to describe how great she is, but there's also the intangibles and the non-stats that make this one of the toughest teams to defend. How about today's Game Changers, brought to you by Under Armour. And in the history of UCLA women's basketball, no one has had a night like Charisma Osborne did against Oklahoma, dropping 36 in the second round. She can get to the free throw line. She's got some mid-range to her game, but she also is a tough check because her ability to stretch outside the three-point line. Now, this is a UCLA offense that features incredible skill set moving cutting slicing and spacing the floor and they're led behind their senior charisma osborne let's send it over now to angel gray ladies simply put the gamecocks have been dominant this season perfect to this point and there are a lot of reasons that go into that but when you ask don staley why she'll tell you this is a team that's playing connected at the heart they have seven seniors on this roster that have really sacrificed their self-notoriety for the betterment and improvement and progression of this program. She said that elite group gave themselves the nickname Freshies and have set the tone for how they have to communicate and play for and with one another. Their meetings have moments of vulnerability, transparency, honesty, and support. That connection of the heart has carried over to the court, especially on the defensive end where you, Debbie, said you believe they've been the best in the country in the history of this game. Yeah. I do, Angel, I really do, and I think we have some numbers that we can back that up with, and there's been some great defenses in the history, and I'm not talking about scoring D, I'm talking about the combination of field goal percentage defense with the shot blocking ability. Those two make this a daunting, scary team to have to go against on the offensive end. Two teams with national championship pedigree, UCLA from 1978, and South Carolina two times and the heavy favorites to win a third this year. What you'll see out of UCLA is a soft cover. They'll be underneath. They'll try to make sure they contest, force South Carolina to the perimeter, and you have to rebound with the Gamecocks. This is a really good rebounding team. Today's starting lineups are brought to you by Capital One. Kiki Rice, one of the top freshmen in the country, playing in her biggest game to date here today. And the size is such a huge deal for South Carolina, both in the lineup and off their bench. Led by this woman right here, Leah Boston, the face up and the finish. I mean, right away, I'm just telling you, you got to close the cushion on her when she catches it in the short corner. That is one of the spots away from the floor where she is, or away from the rim where she is most dangerous. Zaya Cook is their leading scorer at one of the guard spots and an offensive foul called on UCLA. And there's head coach Corey Close now in her 12th season. They were in the Elite Eight in 2018. Trying to get back there once again. She's talked a lot about the Bruins' poise and their balance. They will have to rely on both 
here pretty much in South Carolina's backyard, just down the road away from Columbia. There's a tiny bit of UCLA blue sprinkled in. But you gotta force South Carolina to the perimeter to have a chance. You gotta make them make jump shots. You can't let them beat you in the paint. And that will be the defensive cover that you'll see out of UCLA. They faced each other uh, Thanksgiving weekend and UCLA was tied with South Carolina to start the fourth quarter. So they've been as good as anybody just about against South Carolina this year. That was a long time ago, though. 36 minute game in the last four minutes, it was over with South Carolina's. They've got depth, they wear you down, they've got size. Emily Bessoir able to tap it to herself. But you see, like the last possession, Gina Conti, the point guard for UCLA, like you don't want to over penetrate, right, Beth? Because you no. know the shot blockers are there. She pulled up that time when she had still a path to the bucket. I think UCLA will see them get two feet in the paint and look to not over penetrate, but to pull up and hit a mid-range mid jump shot. Dawn Staley, 15th season now at South Carolina earlier this week, named the uh, Basketball Writers Association National Coach of the Year. So that's her fourth such honor. And few, if any, in the women's game have the resume. An All-American as a player, Olympic gold medal as a player, and as a coach, and a pair of national championships at South Carolina. If UCLA can score, they need to get back, and they'll guard inside the three-point line. You won't see many players up the line, and you see a lot of help off of Fletcher and a lot of help off of Beal, forcing Beal, who is a better three-point shooter, but forcing her to make some shots. Zaya Cook's the one that you stretch a little bit more to come out with a little bit of a longer closeout, but you still don't want her to beat you off the bounce. Her efficiency this year has been better on the offensive end. First foul on Bessoir. 6'4", sophomore from Germany. Cook gets an open look, aired it. And there's some of the UCLA fans. <laughs> And then for UCLA, this is a style of offense that South Carolina doesn't usually see. It's part of the reason why Dawn Staley put them on the schedule originally in November. It's a five out motion. It's a heavy ball screen uh, offense with a lot of cutting and a lot of movement off the ball. Dawn Staley says, we're not a jump to the ball team. We are a locked in defensive team and they will switch like there. And they'll switch to steal, not switch to contain. Well, it's a great shot blocking team. Saxton got a piece of that one. They had 15 blocks against UCLA the first time they played. You talk about style, Debbie. Both these coaches referred to their games against Stanford in terms of their preparation for one another today. As Beal hits the three. What a remarkable job Be Bree Beal has done in the offseason, becoming uh, um, a mild threat outside the arc. I wouldn't call her a dangerous threat yet, but her, her coating has gone from, um, what, yellow? Or red to yellow, yep. you know? Like, she's not quite a green, meaning has a free freedom to shoot whenever she wants. She does take good decisions with the ball, though. Force another turnover. Cook with the push all the way, and that's the second foul on Besswald. Quick substitution for the Bruins. Christine Iwala, the 6'2 freshman from San Antonio, comes on. Well, I think it's important for Corey Close in this game, now that Bessoir has two, is managing the tempo and getting her bench some early minutes yeah. against South Carolina. Freshman London Jones has also checked in for UCLA. 5-4 out of Riverside, California, the number one ranked recruiting class in the country. Arriving in Westwood this year. Just like this, UC, uh, the uh, South Carolina senior class was the number one class when they arrived four years ago. Look at Sontag all the way to the rim. You gotta finish that. Couldn't convert it. Beal weaving her way into the lane, goes to the left side with the right hand. Another possession. Cook 
will pull up. Tip back out by Boston. Well, but that's Cook's game right there. Mid-range pull up between the elbows. If she can get to the nail, that's a great spot for her to take jump shots. Boston wanted a touch, and she's got one. Mm. Dragged that pivot she foot, got away with a walk, but yep. hits the bucket. Yeah, Corey Close is really upset about that one because she did drag her pivot foot. 10-3 start for South Carolina. Five minutes in. Winner gets Maryland Monday night in the Elite Eight. 15-footer Conti, no. Yeah, you're going to get some shots. You gotta be prepared to make them. Well, they talked a lot about we gotta we gotta take the 15-footers and not over-penetrate. You referenced it yes. earlier, and that, that's a 15-footer they gotta make if they're gonna hang. Saxton tried to wrap it. And Charisma Osborne yet to get going for UCLA, coming off that 36-point performance against Oklahoma. Here she is, ball in hand. One of the things about this South Carolina defense, Debbie, not just the shot blockers, but they are long on the perimeter too with Saxton guarding Charisma and Osborne hits it. So they clear it out, they go a little elbow screen, she pops out, Saxton is a very good defender. I think we could say that on, put that on repeat about South Carolina. <laughs> Kiara Fletcher, the transfer from Georgia Tech, who's been the starter at the point all year. Mid-range, Boston, another offensive rebound, and Beal with the stick back. I mean, they're out-rebounding teams by about 20 per game. They've already got four O-boards. They're number one in the nation in block shots. They're number one in offense or defensive rebounding uh, margin. They're number two in offensive rebounding. Born gets the switch over Saxton. Tough shot. And then they're going to get Cook with a foul on the box out. South Carolina with an early seven point lead. How about Aaliyah Boston in the paint for a couple of points? Early lead for. The overall number one seed in the tournament, South Carolina, as we take a look at today's player spotlight, brought to you by U.S. Army. And some pretty impressive numbers for Leah Boston. She is the all-time rebounding leader at South Carolina, and 81 double-doubles. If she gets a double-double today, she will match the SEC single-season record set by Tara McGowan, and then matched yesterday by Angel Reese. I'd like to know how many Boston and Angel Reese have gotten in the first half or the second half alone, right? Double doubles in just a half. We have that technology. We'll figure that out. Gabriela Jaquez in the 23 in blue. Well, you're seeing too, Debbie, not just the blocks that they make, but the intimidation of that front line and the hesit hesitancy that you see from a lot of yeah. opponents even to dare go in there. I mean, you, you, you don't go in there. I mean, you still like showing some zone right here. Uh, and, and if you do go in there, you go in there to make a play. You don't go in there necessarily to score. And you got a battle right here to keep Cardoso from catching with her numbers to the basketball. They, she likes the lob. Yeah, this is double trouble right here with Aaliyah Boston at 6'5 and Camila Cardozo at 6'7 together on the floor. Yeah, this is what we were talking about before. Most teams don't play with a double low post, right? They more open up the floor, but it's not a bad move because people are sagging anyway. And, you get, and South Carolina has done a good job moving the ball early on. Pull up for London Jones. Boston able to tip it to a teammate, Bree Hall. Well, this is when the pace picks up a little bit. Raven Johnson. She's their speed point guard, the redshirt freshman out of Atlanta. ACL injury kept her sideline last year, but she was the national player of the year in high school prior to that. Cardoso tries to muscle it up and in. Good job that time by the Bruins down low. 
They would like to score quickly if they could before South Carolina gets organized. Just like that, Conti looked much more confident on that play than the previous two attempts. Gina, the grad student out of Grove City, Ohio, transferred in from Wake Forest. Wide open look. I mean, there's not even anybody outside the lane when no. she catches it. Johnson, not her strength, but another offensive rebound. Beal is practically matching UCLA all by herself on the glass. South Carolina did go one for 14 the first time these two teams met outside the three-point line. They're just going to keep wow. firing away, and they're really not close. Part of their MO is to rebound misses. They rebound almost 50% yeah. of the shots they miss it's and a, get a second chance. It's definitely a ridiculous number. Hall with the finish and a touchdown lead for South Carolina. And, and here's the thing, too, Beth. I mean, you're going to make a mistake, but you can't make back-to-back -back mistakes. That's when South Carolina can go on a big run. Six offensive rebounds here in the first quarter, final 30 seconds. Hakez and a foul on Boston. So that's a very well-designed play by Corey Close. So you're going clear out, ISO, one-on-one, -on -one, and you're attacking the shot blocker. And you get right into Boston's chest. It's a good play by Hakez. And that name is familiar. Her, her brother plays on the UCLA men's yep. team for Mick Cronin. Out of Camarillo, California. She was in the McDonald's All-America game last year, was the co-MVP with her UCLA teammate, Kiki Rice. Kiki was telling us she's rooming with Jaquez and at the hotel watching the men's game, <laughs> Hotel security came up because they had a noise complaint from their neighbors as she was cheering on her brother. They fell to Gonzaga. You see like mixing up their D, back to the man-to-man. -man. Cook, looking to beat a buzzer. Oh, did she keep that dribble alive? Good defense by Osborne. And they don't get a shot up. South Carolina and UCLA. Bruins got to like the pace early. Close through one. Getting set to start the second quarter here in the Sweet 16. South Carolina leading UCLA. And here's Angel Gray. Coach, one of the adjustments in seeing Carolina in this game, you said we have to make sure that we dominate the boards. Right now, they're winning in that department 13 to 7. Any adjustment there? Well, a lot of adjustments. I mean, we're not getting a body. Uh, we got to create space on every shot. If we give them multiple opportunities, that's what got us in foul trouble with Emily Bassoir, and they're giving them too many second shot opportunities. And then we got to be aggressive to make them play defense to the cup. We're settling for way too many jump shots, not getting good enough ball movement. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Neither side able to uh, shoot it particularly well in that first quarter. Bree Beal, five points, five rebounds for South Carolina. Aaliyah Boston, four points and five rebounds. Just three baskets in the first quarter for UCLA. It's the 37th time this year that Carolina has held a team to single digit scoring in a quarter. I think they're so connected on that end, and they communicate so well, and, and they have gotten in a stance here in the first quarter. You know, they're not just relying on their shot blocking ability, but boy, when you've got a shot blocker behind you as a perimeter defender, you can take a few risks. You can get up the line a little bit. You can get really aggressive in closing down that space and put great ball pressure on, like we're seeing right here. Yeah. Cameron Brown, back to Rice. Driving on Cook. I like the no call, just a little contact. No ball is going to go the other way. Of course, the scouting report on Carolina, Debbie, is you got to 
turn them into outside shooters. That's what UCLA did in that first quarter. And in the two games now, South Carolina's two for 21 from three-point range against the Bruins. Look at them, sag, sag, sag. Yep. I use my tape measure usually to measure how far people hit threes outside the three-point line. I might need to see how far oh. away a defender is yeah. from a South Carolina shooter. Yeah. Raven Johnson, a lot of traffic inside in a three-second, nope, travel. You know, it's so hard to play in a crowd all the time. You know I'm trying to get on the rules committee, right? Yes. Okay, I want the defense. Well, you wanted to bring Zaya Cook and Leah Bonson yeah. with you because they, they agree. They said they would come with me on the rules committee. We want the defensive three-second yes. rule. Agreed. That means you, you can't be, like, you can't play and sit on people's lap. We're taking away the skill set of our game and some of our great post play by making them play in a crowd all the time. I want to see freedom yes. of movement. I don't want to see people sitting on a post player's legs. Yeah. We all want you to move on from complaining about losing the one and one five years <laughs> no, ago. No, I'm not. So you need a new, no. you need a new rallying cry. So it's the defensive three seconds. Yeah, so I'm not done complaining about that. <laughs> Again, making South Carolina take the outside shots. And here come Bruins. Rice, tough shot. Got to capitalize on those opportunities. Or Raven Johnson will do that to you. Carves up the D. She is a straight line driver, and she can change the rhythm. Oh, look at that pass by Conti. John Todd, no, bothered by Cardoso. And see, Beth, you know, they turn you over, they make things difficult, they change your rhythm, and they speed you up. Yeah. You know, they make you play faster than you're comfortable playing. I mean, watch this end to end, like boom, straight down the middle of the floor. Where is the transition defense? You gotta stop the ball first. And they come at you in waves. The South Carolina bench averages 36 points per game. Boston. Guard helps defensively. Aliyah tries the baseline. John Top holds her ground and forces the turnover. If nothing else, the Bruins have done a good job of keeping the crowd quiet so far in Greenville. Osborne turns it over. I mean, she ran Beal right into that screen, and Aaliyah Boston in a little bit of drop coverage, meaning her player is setting the screen, and she is dropping into the gap to not allow Osborne to turn the corner. Boston will stay in. Cardoso will join her. I mean, Aaliyah Boston just She's a, a three-time first-team All-American. I think there's only nine of those. She was an All-American as a freshman, too. There are only five players that have been AP All-Americans all four years of their career. Beal knocks it down. Also a member of that senior class that has won 94% of their games together the last four years, including one national championship. They're working on a second. ESPN Analytics says it is them against the field. About a 50-50 proposition as to who's going to win the title. That's an offensive foul called on South Carolina. Here's what we're talking about with the ESPN Analytics chance to win 48% for South Carolina. And if you want the rest of the field, about 51%. But right now, it's UCLA kind of hanging around. Well, you got to move the ball. You got to get side to side. 
They're keeping their they're keeping their dribble along uh, alive on the baseline, and they're getting some open shots. They you just have to make them against this team when you get a look. Can't shoot 25 percent, which is the case right now. And that's part of the uh, beauty of here's the high low. That's part of the beauty of their defense. It's not just turning you over, as I said. It's changing the rhythm, making you play faster, thinking you've got to shoot it quicker. Three pointer, no. What a box out for Boston. Low man wins on that one. I like the Corey Close put Bess Warren back in the game, too, against this size. Now, she does have two. Let's see if South Carolina will attack her. But she's such an, an incredible part of what they do offensively in their space with the big lineup for South Carolina. Another second chance coming for the Gamecocks. You have position, and then they use their length yeah. over the top. It's their seventh offensive rebound of this first half. Neil should be feeling confident. She's shooting 50% from the floor right now. Osborne, chance for UCLA to beat the defense up the floor. Rice missed it. The tip no good and a foul. This is two on one, and you have to come away with points here when you get this kind of opportunity in the open floor. There you see the foul. Kiki Rice to the free throw line. Freshman out of Bethesda, Maryland, the not only prep national basketball player of the year, but the Gatorade National Female Athlete of the Year. So how about this, Debbie, at Los Angeles, UCLA gets the number one recruit in this year's class. USC gets yeah. number one next year. Congrats to Lindsey Gottlieb yes. who's shaking it up. As they both get set to leave to go to the Big Ten. Hey, the NCAA Women's Championship continues today with the Sweet 16. Doubleheader coming from Seattle. That starts at 4 o'clock Eastern on ABC. All on the road to the Final Four in Dallas. And the National Championship Sunday afternoon, April 2nd on ABC. The one thing that uh, Kiki Rice and Charisma Osborne told us yesterday in our meeting was that they weren't going to be intimidated by the crowd for sure since they've already played this team in Columbia and they knew it would be a full house of Gamecock fans and it is. Cook and in and down. Senior from Toledo, Ohio making her 134th start. Cook, Beal, and Boston together for over 130 games. Rice gets the mid-range. Really good execution. Coming off that pin down action. Getting to the nail and to the elbow and being able to knock it down. Cook the lob taken away by the Bruins. And here's Jones leaking out the other way. Foot race is on, and Cardoso is back to swat it. What a play. Wow. Fletcher. And a foul on the floor on UCLA. This is all of 6-7 with some closing speed on Jones off the glass into their transition game. What a play. Thank you, Al. These are the two games uh, still to come from Seattle. And a shout out to uh, one of the only two remaining number one seeds. Of course, South Carolina's here. Virginia Tech tonight with Elizabeth Kitley and Georgia Amor. The job that Kenny Brooks has done with the Hokies as they try and go where they have never been before and join the greatest season in school history. Yes, no question about it. The two-time ACC player of the year, Elizabeth Gitling, and Sontag on this end with a big-time block of Boston. They will take on Tennessee, and then UConn and <laughs> Ohio State. So you turn the corner, and there's Boston. Boom. Bang. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he double dribble. <laughs> Now, she will switch to contain. The guards sometimes will switch to steal. There's a difference. Kara Fletcher lobs it inside, count it. And one opportunity for Cardoso. 
I mean, when she catches it that deep, you just have to let it go. I mean, this is a great seal. She holds her defender up the line. The pass is to the backboard or the corner, only where she can catch it. That's the second on uh, Jean Tak, so she will check out. The two big girls from Germany, she and Bessoir, with two personal fouls in the first half. You and have to have a little discipline there, right? It's tough. It's tough. The transfer from Syracuse. This is on the free throw. She was the SEC's sixth woman of the year this season. Rice will back it out. Approaching three minutes to go in the first half. Best warm baseline blocked by Boston. Oh no, and a third foul on Best Warm. She tries to get to the other side of the rim, but it's a great block by Boston. You gotta go rim body ball in that situation there so you can protect the ball and keep the defender between you and the ball by using your body. Sagging man to man. Reveal. Boy, she's having herself a terrific first half. 9.6 rebounds for Beal, who was scoreless in the first meeting against UCLA back in November. I mean, she's really shooting the ball with incredible confidence. And when you've worked as hard as she has in the offseason, you should shoot it with confidence. At this time of the year, no shooter should lose their confidence. <laughs> I mean, look at the cushion. Look where the defense is. Everyone's in the paint, and there's Beal out there by herself, a late contest. She's more dangerous off the bounce. That sagging man-to-man, -man, you just have to know personnel, and the decision has always been, everybody guards South Carolina the same way. There's really no wrinkle here. It's a sagging man, and you just try to help inside out. Iwala. Final two minutes of the first half. Undefeated South Carolina with the lead over UCLA. Winner will play Maryland, the two seed, a winner over Notre Dame earlier. That'll be Monday night in the Elite Eight. Cook, her charging drive won't go. Kiki Rice. Errant pass. Seventh turnover for UCLA. They have been held to five field goals here in the first half by the South Carolina defense. Helping on the post. She's guarding Fletcher. Fletcher? No. I mean, it's amazing to me how many basketballs the South Carolina length gets their hands on. Yeah. Even when you're in front, you have position. It's the length, because they go vertical and they tap it back. Or look at this right here. I mean, that's a 50-50 ball on the offensive end. And Cardoso makes a play. Another deflection and another turnover. That's a locked in defensive effort. Again, Dawn Staley said, we lock in. We don't really jump to the ball. We got our assignments. We will switch. 
Three straight turnovers forced by that D. When you talk about how well they play together, it's so evident on the defensive end, working as one collective. Tisha Amin here trying to work out of the double. That's the second She'll time back. she caught it in the paint area, in the lane area, and she's trying to make a move in a crowd. I say pass it back and repost. Osborne. Just one for three in the first half. There have not been many opportunities for Charisma. Iwala muscles it up and in. That's a good execution there. They go through the door screens. Hakez comes around. That screen has nothing. And Iwala inside. Shot clock's off. Beal. Ooh, that time she had a hand in her face with a late clock. Surprised she didn't drive it. 25 to 15. As South Carolina holds UCLA to six baskets on 27% shooting. It's their best half of play defensively of the season. And Angel now has rebuilt. Defensively, I don't know how else to describe it, but smothering. You've already forced eight turnovers, and you've only given up six field goals to UCLA. How would you describe how you guys have come out to start this game? Um, I definitely think for us, you know, defense makes the game easier. Um, it puts you ahead, especially in tough times like this, uh, parts of the season like this. So I definitely think that's one of our main focuses. Right now, UCLA is really sagging off and daring you to shoot the three. You've only made the, the only three yeah. for this team. When you're looking at how you have to adjust or what you need to do to make them come out of that, what does that lead to? Um, you definitely have to have confidence to begin with, and that uh, brings them out of the paint, and it allows our post to be dominant. Thank you so much. 25-15 South Carolina, the lead at the break over UCLA as we get you back to the studio in L. Here in Greenville, South Carolina, it's the lowest scoring first half for both sides as uh, the defense has got the job done for the Bruins and the Gamecocks. Beth Mowens, Debbie Antonelli, we've got Angel Gray with us as well. Neither side, though, is going to file that one away as uh, the <laughs> offensive prowess they were hoping for, but the defenses were pretty good. Yeah, and you know, it's the uh, same cover against South Carolina every time they play. You have to protect inside out, and that's exactly the game plan for UCLA on the defensive end. When you take a look at what they have been able to do, five players in the paint, and there's a huge cushion between offensive players and the paint. You see Brie Beal on the perimeter. She shoots a three. This is one that she misses, but 6-7 is on the weak side, rebounding. How about this one? The ball's in the middle of the floor, five in the paint. Brie Beal is going to get to the nail and make this jump shot wide open. Okay, South Carolina is shooting 33% from the floor, but they've had a lot of wide open shots. Here are five players all shifted to the right side of the floor. Kiara Fletcher does a really good job of occupying the D on the top of the floor just to freeze it enough to kick it to be able to knock down a wide open jump shot. That's our impact move for today's game presented by Ufos. The numbers, Bree Beal is the only one that's made those outside shots for South Carolina. And on the defensive end for the Gamecocks, my goodness, an eight-point first quarter for the Bruins, a seven-point second quarter for the Bruins. Just relentless on the defensive end. Again, it's a soft cover. Nothing will adjust with personnel. Zia Cook trying to throw over the top. She loves that right hand. Blocked. Shantak, who starts the second half for Emily Bessoir, who's got three fouls. Just six baskets for the Bruins in the first 20 minutes. And a post-up action by Charisma Osborne. Ooh, they're gonna call jump ball. Good help inside by Saxton. 
Angel Gray talked with Corey Close. Ladies, as a refresher, Corey Close said the best way to describe her team playing in this tournament using the, the wooden pyramid of success is poise. She said, Angel, we did not show that in the first half. They have to set new screens for South Carolina. They're getting in between them. She said, we need more reversals and creating lanes to drive and attack. There's a create a lane drive and attack from Charisma Osborne. I think they got to put the ball in Charisma Osborne's yes. hand a little bit more here in the second half. She only had three shots in the first half. Had a 36-point game in the second round to win over Oklahoma. And a foul will get Aaliyah Boston to the free throw line. Good footwork to draw that foul by Boston on the other end. Look at the acceleration and the use of the other side of the rim. Osborne saying, hey, look, they got their hands on me. Of course they do. <laughs> South Carolina is a very long and active defensive team. 75% free throw shooter, Aaliyah Boston. Against ranked opponents, averaging a double-double. In her NCAA tournament career, averaging a double-double, 14 points and 12 rebounds per game. Well, she has accomplished a lot, and when we talked to her yesterday, she is really proud of that academic All-American yes. honor. Accelerating a little bit quicker through their actions now, UCLA. Conti's pass goes awry. Conti, a four-year starting point guard at Wake Forest, knows to make a better entry to, than that. One dribble and a bounce. Sontag had position, and while the post players get position, it's so hard to get it against South Carolina because it's a foot fight on the inside. Fletcher looking for some help. Here's Boston using the Saxton screen. They will stay at this end. Of course, the NCAA men's basketball Elite Eight continues tonight over on TBS. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Women's tournament will continue with the uh, Sweet 16, 4 o'clock Eastern on ABC, and then following that tonight on ESPN2. As we fill out the Elite Eight. Cook through the door screens, weak side board, Beal, bucket Saxton inside. There again, position, yet they have length to tap it back. You gotta really put a body into them. Foul gonna be called on Leah Boston. That's her second. We'll get Osborne to the line. Bruins arrive here in Greenville. They are the youngest team in the field in this NCAA tournament. And playing essentially a road game today. Oh, it's definitely a road game. Yeah. This place is packed with Gamecocks. It's been hanging around, and now South Carolina trying to Pulled away a little bit here in the third. I think South Carolina, have they led the nation in uh, attendance 10 years? Yeah. Did it again this year? Yeah. I mean, Dawn Staley, when I say the product is a narrative, she really put a product on the floor, and the South Carolina administration was ready to support it when yeah. she started winning. Because I remember Dawn's first couple of years when there was no line at the restroom, one concession stand was yeah. open, there's no traffic in the parking lot, there certainly wasn't anybody tailgating, and you know they tailgate oh, in South they Carolina. Do. They bring it. They're probably tailgating out there t today. Cook has fouled on the shot. Yeah, it was great to talk to, you know, Dawn about, obviously she inspires so many people with the success that she has had for the last seven Final Fours, two national championships. She talked about the inspiration that her mom has dealt taught her from a very young age. I think it stems from discipline, right? Dawn, That's what it, she said. It, it ex she expects and has earned the right to demand because she's proven over and over 
what it looks like, right? And the players may fight it initially, but talking to the older players here at South Carolina, they've come to appreciate it, and obviously it's paying huge dividends. And that's the definition of culture. That's yeah. how you build it, because the older players tell the younger ones, this is the way it works. The standard. I think sometimes culture and identity are cliches in our game, but that's the definition of it right there. Haquez into the paint, short. Ricochets out to Jones. See, Cameron Brown's not a shooter from out there. It also comes back to the players that you're recruiting and the kind of mentality that they bring. And at South Carolina, you know, Don talks about, I want kids that do dream big and that have goals that singularly you're going to push yourselves and collectively you're going to compete for championships. And Angel touched on it earlier, you know, the sacrifices that you sometimes have to make. You might have been a 2,000 point scorer in high school, but when you come here, that's not your job. That's right. You got to accept your role. And if you don't like your role, work harder to change your role. Don't complain. Work harder. Add to your skill set. Get in the gym. Spend time working on your shot. Get in better shape. There's always something a player can do to get better. Fletcher, and one. A great ball movement and a great acceleration on the baseline by Fletcher. South Carolina goes side to side and then Fletcher takes it strong. Look how she uses her body, Beth. That's what I'm talking about, rim body ball. She squares her shoulders up to the backboard and you can't block it and she's strong enough to finish. That's a weight room bucket right there. Well, you talk about some big shoes to fill. Not only are you coming to play for one of the great point guards of all time, but you're, you're replacing Destiny Henderson, who was such a stud for them last year en route to the national championship. Their lone starter lost from a year ago. Fletcher commits the foul on Osborne. Well, Osborne has definitely made up her mind to be more aggressive here in the second half. And UCLA needs it, and, and quite frankly, when Kiki Rice comes back in the game, she's going to have to be more aggressive as well. Those are two legitimate scorers for UCLA that have to get going if they're going to have a chance. Osborne back to the line. Well, the NCAA Elite Eight Gets underway tomorrow night. Action starts at 7 Eastern with Miami and LSU, followed by Louisville and Iowa. Hey, Jeff Walls and Louisville, they have been to four different Final Fours and two title games. And the four different Final Fours they've been to have been with four different groups of athletes, yep. meaning it's not like back-to-back -back or there's been a span of at least four years between each of those Final Fours. It's pretty remarkable if you think about it. So you know they've been in that situation. I think the Elite Eight game has an awful lot of pressure on it. Boston scores. Yeah, they pulled off one of the big upsets, of course, when they beat Baylor with Brittany Griner a few years back, and they pull off the same thing with Caitlin Clark. One of the greatest upsets in the history of the tournament. Yeah. Now South Carolina's got it going on the offensive end. Saxton with the layup. It's part of that wear down. It's the physical and the mental of the wear down that you have to go against. And their ability on the glass, which they just pound teams on the boards. Now the crowd's getting excited. They try the backdoor cut, but Boston is waiting inside, and Osborne had nowhere to go. Anytime you can get ahead of the ball and you run hard and look at Saxon with an early seal. That's a quick hitter in transition and a great find by Fletcher. Fifteen point advantage now for the Gamecocks. That was a tough pass to handle. 
midway through the third quarter and South Carolina, the undefeated Gamecocks in control right now. And that is the house that everybody's trying to get to, American Airlines Arena in Dallas, Texas. Home of this year's Final Four. Next Sunday is the national championship game. A week from tomorrow, who's going to be there? Louisville and Iowa are already set for tomorrow night. An Elite Eight matchup. The winner is on to Dallas. And the winner of this game will face Maryland Monday night at 7 Eastern on ESPN. So you got a doubleheader tomorrow and a doubleheader Monday to determine the Final Four. I can't wait. I mean, we'll be calling one of those games. Three-pointer is good for the Bruins. And Charisma Os uh, Osborne, you said they got to yeah. get to the ball more this third quarter. They've been I mean, doing that. Come on, Beth, like, get a couple of stops, right? Can you get a couple of stops? Can you rebound? Beal thought about it, but that mm -hmm. might be a little too far out of her range. They try to lob into oh Cardozo and the catch over the defender. Oh, I mean, you can't do anything about that. That's just 6-7 at the rim, and you really can't keep her from getting there. Mm -hmm. You got to have size in that matchup to play them. You know, I've said all year, you know, to, in order to, to challenge South Carolina, you have to be able to play them one-on-one -on -one in the post. You have to have multiple scorers on the floor to move the ball. On the drive, no. Bounces out to UCLA. On the run, Conti missed the layup. Well, you know when you face South Carolina, you're gonna have to deal with size all over the floor and especially down low. I mean, watch this right here. Look at the target hand. It's a great pass away, only where she can catch. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. Look where that ball is caught, at the front of the rim. UCLA coach Corey Close, who's uh, big into the analytics, what did she tell us? She, she looked it up, it's only about 5% of all teams in D1 that play with a double post, or play with the kind of size that South Carolina is capable of, and that's what Makes them such a tough yeah. matchup. That's what's gotten them undefeated at 34-0. I mean, there's only a couple of teams that have that kind of size, and there's not many left remaining in the tournament. LSU now, I mean, they're on the other side of the bracket from South Carolina, but Kim Mulkey has Angel Reese and Ladeja Williams, who played fantastic yesterday. You just have to have more pressure on the passer, but here's the problem. To have pressure on the passer, you've got to open up the space in the paint. So it's a it's a choice, right? It's a tough choice. But it's called pick your poison. Yeah. Um, That's the fourth foul on Chantak. And so Cardoso to the line. She had a terrific game in the regular season against UCLA. She's doing it again today. Big reason why they're with uh, her and with Boston, they're scoring 44 points a night in the paint. I mean, this is a team that averages 81. They're certainly not gonna get there tonight. I don't think they will be able to get there. The fewest right. points allowed, by the way, in a Sweet 16 game is 34. That was South Carolina a few years ago against Texas. I called that game. I remember that game. UCLA has reached double digits this quarter. That's the first time tonight. As Beal gets a nice hand on the way out. Bessoir, got it for three. That's why her early foul trouble was such an issue. And Corey Close is gonna call timeout with her team. Hopefully trying to build some momentum off that made triple to make it a 14 point game. Now it's been one of the great senior classes in the history of the game. Trying to get a second national championship to go with a 94% 
winning record. They've been beating teams over the course of their careers by over 20 points a game. Six SEC championships, plenty of hardware. Leah Boston, two times the SEC Player of the Year. She was the National Player and Defensive Player of the Year last season. Trying to get back to the Final Four for the third time. And when you talk about some of the great classes in the history of the game and the faces behind those classes, Aliyah Boston certainly has put her class in the conversation if they can lock down another ring in Dallas. The likes of Shamiqua Holstlaw and Diana Tarasi and Maya Moore and Brianna Stewart, some of the all-time greats over the years. Knocked out of bounds and will stay with UCLA. Don't forget, too, with this current group, they lost a tournament due to the pandemic when South Carolina was number one at the end of that regular season. But the appreciation for what has come before with Holtzclaw, the first three-peat in history, then Tarasi's class did it. Maya Moore's class, couple undefeated seasons, and then, of course, Brianna Stewart's class at Connecticut, the unprecedented four-peat. South Carolina this year trying to win a third national championship. They'd be the fifth program to do that. They'd be the fourth program to try and go back to back to win titles. How about that move? South Carolina had to switch. Good execution off the timeout by UCLA. Bruins are uh, playing close to even with Carolina here in the third. They trailed by 10 at the break. Cardoso again, position, I mean, too low. It's, it's a challenge. It is a big time challenge. You've got to be able to make ba baskets on this end of the floor. You can't have very many empty trips. Aaliyah Boston, 11 rebounds. She's one bucket away from another double-double. And there's an injured player down at the other end of the floor for UCLA. And Dawn Staley saw it and uh, I, I, wisely alerted the official, I yeah. believe, or did Dawn call oh, a timeout? I think she called a timeout because there was an injured player yeah. down there. But let's see if they charge the timeout to Dawn in, in South Carolina. UCLA didn't see it initially because they were getting set to make a substitution for Emily Bessoir. And it will be a timeout called by South Carolina. Well, that's a good sign right there because she did have the ACL tear last year, but it looks like she's working on her right side. Yep. The NJA uh, Women's Sweet 16 has another doubleheader coming your way from Seattle later the today. The play is under review. We're looking to determine if the contact is intentional or disqualifying. Ohio State UConn at 4 o'clock on ABC and then Tennessee Virginia Tech 6.30 ESPN 2. I, I don't believe there was anything there to disqualify. No. There, I don't even think there's anything to up. Yeah. I don't think there's anything there, no. but it's an unobserved contact, so they'll take a look. Either you put an intentional on it or you do nothing because there was no whistle no. on it. So I think there's nothing there. And I don't think you put a there's no whistle on this play. She just awkwardly looks like she had some awkward time. Now there's a little hip does check. does not rise to the level yes. of an intentional or contact disqualifying yes. foul. Play will resume. Nothing there. Good job. The officials came to it quickly. Twenty-two to go here in the quarter. Johnson now in at the point. Oh, 
Cardoso. What's he gonna do, make her catch it off the lane, Beth? Hall with the nice fade. And that's a great skip over the top by Cardoso. How about Hall? That's a good looking sophomore right there for Dawn Staley. When this senior class moves on, Hall's gonna get a lot more PT. Out of Dayton, Ohio. Osborne blocked by Boston. That's that over penetration that we were talking about, but it's a great funnel by the D right into the shot blocker. Top shot blocking team in the country, over 310 now on the season. They block about 20% of opponents' two point shots, including that last one right there. Another lob over the top, Cardoso. Got it. 6-0 run and the size making a difference here. Gamecocks up 20. Osborne doesn't beat the buzzer and they're on their feet in Greenville in appreciation of Carolina and a 20 point lead. Getting set to start the fourth quarter, UCLA, South Carolina, Gamecock head coach Don Staley now with Angel. Coach, you, coach, you've praised your team's ability to show attention to detail. How has that been applied on the defensive end in this game? It's been great. It's been great. We're locked in. We're locked in. I know uh, uh, UCLA, they're, they're a very methodical offensive team, so you have, to, you have to disrupt whenever you can because they got players that can, that can light it up at any time. Thanks, Coach. Disrupt they have, Debbie. Oh, I think that's one of the words. They've been terrific in making uh, all the teams they play uncomfortable and speeding teams up on their offensive quarter-court -quarter execution and communicating on the defensive end. Bruins have 30 points in the game. South Carolina scored 25 just in that third quarter alone, and they are up 20. 10 minutes away from a date with Maryland in the Elite Eight. Terps were a winner earlier over Notre Dame. Big second half from Cheyenne Sellers and Diamond Miller for the Terps. Bessoir with two really good looks. Everyone's able to take it away. Osborne leaves it off for Hawkeyes, blocked by Cardoso. Look at Osborne hustling. Still fighting. Almost able to get it back. Aaliyah Boston wants him to slow down so she can get a touch maybe here. Eight points on six shots so far. Osborne again bothered on the shot by Cardoso. I mean, you got to throw it way up on the glass. You're playing against 6'5 and 6'7 along that front line right now for Carolina. I think Osborne looks a little bit fatigued too. She's played so hard here in the second half for UCLA. Foul off the ball. And she will come out for a breather. Yeah, she needs a break. Not for long though. That's the fourth foul on Bessoir. Johnson, and now Hall has it. We'll slack off the shooter again. Hawkes. 
steps away from a me here, but count that as another shot bothered by the bigs. Alter, a me here six four to go along with six five and six seven. As a result, they've uh, got pretty much every advantage you would think. Twice as many points in the paint. The rebound advantage is plus 13. Yeah, it's been a dominant defensive effort. The combination of field goal percentage D with their shot blocking ability allows them to have some decisions about how they want to guard, what kind of ball pressure they want to play with. This is not a trapping South Carolina defense. And they have multiple shot blockers. Yeah. Dawn Staley wants the principle of verticality in play here. And I agree with her. Yeah. Instead, it'll be the first foul on Saxton. London Jones to the line, member of the Pac-12 All-Freshman team this year. Gets a pair there. I mean, you said it earlier, Beth, remember this is the youngest team left in the field. This is a very young UCLA team. We got a lot coming back. The handle on Leah Austin. Oh, you love it when the big girl handles up the floor at 6-5. Crowd agrees. Angel? I think if Candace Parker is watching, she might agree too. Don Staley told me in the hallway, she said, until Aaliyah Boston can bring the ball up the floor, play point forward and face up and do fadeaways, I don't know if we can have that conversation. She's just happy with Aaliyah Boston doing Aaliyah Boston things. Yeah. Well, you know, when we talked to, about, to Dawn about the irony of being this great point guard with all these good post players, Dawn claims she is just a post player at heart. Which got uh, a great chuckle out of all of us. <laughs> But uh, Dawn claims she used to back down uh, defenders. Yes. And I said, so it was the Staley before it was the Barkley? Because Charles Barkley oh, yeah. is what you call it now. You Barkley down, <laughs> back it down, back it down, back it down. <laughs> We're going to start calling it the Staley. Yes. Well, one of her um, idols was good at that. You know, Dawn Staley and I are a lot alike. You don't get to say that very often. But we both loved Mo Cheeks growing up, Debbie. Kids, Google Mo yeah. Cheeks, a great point guard for Dr. J in Philly. Did you wear a rubber band? Who used band? to do that? Did you wear a rubber band on your wrist like I Mo Cheeks? did not. Well, Dawn did as a player, yes, and she when did. she made a mistake, she'd snap her rubber band on her wrist as her own form of self-discipline. A post player at heart, America. Yeah, I don't know about that, Coach <laughs> Daly. One of the all-time iconic point guards in the history of the game. They are uh, closing in, by the way, on a 35th win, which would tie the school record, and they would have a chance to break that Monday night. Their starters are going to get some rest, too, to gear up for Maryland. Their starters always get rest. <laughs> <laughs> they don't play a, a lot of uh, minutes uh, for starters, yeah. and they haven't, uh, they haven't needed to, actually. Aaliyah Boston averages 26 minutes a game. Cook averages 26 minutes a game. Beal, 25. Only five of their 35 opponents have been within 10 points at the end of a game. Been wiping people out. Ami here to beat the shot clock buzzer. I'm not sure that touched the rim. You know, and, and Ami here is another player. I want to go back to that defense of three seconds because she's forced to play in a crowd all the time. And, Remember, she can play the point, and she did play the point last year when forced into playing point because Destiny Henderson was out. That was the big question mark about South Carolina this year coming into the season was who was going to be the point guard? And Raven Johnson was one that a lot of Gamecock fans talked about, and Fletcher was hurt last year, the transfer from Georgia Tech. She earned the starting 
spot, but I'm telling you what, Raven Johnson's the future at the point for South Carolina. Dawn's got a good point guard coming in next year, too, from South Carolina. Rice. Switch to the left, and Saxton has it. Normally, that might work. But against Normally, South Carolina, yeah. they, they make you change. Like, you get to the elbow, and you're open. You got to pull it up, pull up, and shoot a 15-footer. Buckets have been so hard to come by today for UCLA against this smothering South Carolina defense. Traveling violation, under five to go for a spot in the Elite Eight. South Carolina in control. Let's check out our Capital One rewarding performance, Camila Cardoso. Cardoso doing a great job of being an impact at the rim on both ends of the floor. Look at that deep catch, her shot blocking ability. Why that other? Skip pass over the top and at 6'7", she can just catch it where no one else can. Plus that block from the first half, the Ooh. one she chased down, Man. that'll be a Sports Center highlight, I would believe. Yeah, chased Top it 10. down from half court. That long loping stride. Under five minutes to go in South Carolina. Inching closer to an unbeaten trip to the Elite Eight. Talk about undefeated national champions. It's happened nine times from four different programs, UConn, Tennessee, Baylor, and the very first time, the Texas Longhorns. That's a walk. And South Carolina trying to join that crowd. It would be a third national championship for Dawn. That's some rarefied air if they get there. You talk about Gino and Pat and Tara and Mulkey. Yep. Here's your unbeaten. Of course, UConn did it six times in their 11 national championships. Their only loss in the finals was last year to South Carolina. Gino was 11 and 0 before that. What do you think coming up, Ohio State, UConn, and yep. then, uh, Virginia Tech, Tennessee tonight? Well, I'm excited about watching Ohio State and UConn as Bree Hall sticks another. She's got 10. I'm telling you, I like her. Woo, she's going to be something next year. And she gets more minutes. She handles, she defends, she shoots it from three, she stretches a D, she's got that kind of motor. It's exactly that discussion we were talking about before. Young players learning from Dawn Stanley, the culture at the top with the seniors saying, hey, this is how we do it here. This is the discipline that's required. You want to have excellence. We're doing it this way. This is the blueprint. So jump on. Sacrifice a little of your own for the greater good of the team. It's a pretty good formula for Coach Stanley. And now wholesale substitutions. Kalasha Cooper coming on. Ashlyn Watkins, the freshman from Columbia, getting in. Well, when Coach Daly's decides to put Olivia Thompson in, that's when the roof's going to go off the building. So the senior class, because she's the one senior that doesn't get as much yeah. time. She's the fifth. The push. The freshman started out four years ago with Aaliyah Boston getting a triple-double at home. And they closed out their home campaigns at Colonial Life. I believe it was Olivia Thompson who made the last basket in that building in the second round for that collective. Three minutes. I'm here. 
nails it. Well, the UCLA Bruins are gonna bow out with a 27 win season as they make a substitution here to get Bryn Maskowitz in. And here comes Olivia Thompson. No runs up for her yeah. to get a triple. Chloe kicks on the floor. But the Bruins, their eighth trip to the Sweet 16. They, got they played the for the uh, Pac-12 championship this year and their uh, season coming to a close here. At the uh, hands of the overall number one seed in the tournament. Osborne, the senior from Moreno Valley, California, closing out her year. Now, what a brilliant career Os Chris Osborne has had for UCLA and Corey Close. Thompson. Osborne leaks the other way. Cooper giving chase and a foul. And Charisma went down hard. last couple of minutes here is as loud as it's been in this building mm -hmm. all day. And hopefully Osborne's gonna get up okay here. As we were saying, the senior, what an amazing career at UCLA. One of the best rebounding guards in the country. The ruling on the floor is a common foul on number 11. The play is under review. She just falls off I think she landed on, her le on uh, mm -hmm. uh, Cooper's foot. Yeah, I think that's a play on the ball, and yeah. that's a... Looked like all ball up top. Yeah. It was. There, I don't think there's anything excessive or extra, unnecessary, no. by the definition of intentional foul. It was a play on the ball. It's a basketball play. Unfortunately, it's a hard foul. Well, the NCAA championship continues later today with another doubleheader for the Sweet 16 and the last two spots in the Elite Eight. We'll get you out to Seattle for that. And then a doubleheader tomorrow night, two spots in the Final Four, and a doubleheader Monday night, two spots in the Final Four on the road to Dallas next weekend. Osborne today, 12 points, seven rebounds. Angel? Well, we'd be remiss not to mention that it is Women's History Month, and we have some women that are creating their own history here in Greenville. All eight teams here in this region are female head coaches. And when I asked Corey Close what that meant to her, she said, look, there's nothing against our male counterparts, but it is an amazing moment to be included in that number. And amongst other women, she respects so much. So definitely a nod to the women here in Greenville. Yes. Well, and a doff for the cap, too, to one of the original great coaches in the game, Billy Moore, who passed away during the season at UCLA and engineered their 1978 national championship. And so many of the women coaching today and coaching this weekend. Oh, such a debt to those that have come before. Billy, of course, amongst other things, was a great mentor to Pat Summit. Yes, and a 76 Olympic coach and a really great competitive golfer who loved that sport almost equally to how much she loved basketball. The Naismith Hall of Famer, Billy Moore, who we lost this year, who we miss. She's a friend of ours. Well, nobody in college athletics wins like UCLA does. And all the different sports, they've won more than anybody. 
But the attention now turns to South Carolina. And the road continues to a third national championship. And they inch one game closer. The Elite Eight coming up with Maryland and Diamond Miller, who did not play in their regular season matchup, a win for South Carolina. They were a winner earlier today over Notre Dame. Cooper, three. Final minute of this one. If you're gonna knock out the defending champs, you're, you're gonna have to figure out a way to work against what might be the, well, the best defense in the history of the sport, the way that South Carolina has been playing at that end of the floor. And you're gonna have to figure out what to do with all that size. Jones hits the mid-range. It's an incredible run by the Gamecocks who remain undefeated. Challenged by Old Miss into overtime, the closest game they've played in. Maryland's going to have to be able to make shots, take care of the yeah. ball, rebound, keep South Carolina out of transition. And let's see what Brenda Freeze does because she loves to open up the floor, extend her D, looks to trap. South Carolina's size can throw over the top of most defenses. You got to be able to defend them one-on-one -on, -one on the block. You got to be able to rebound. You can't let them have offensive rebounds. And you have to move the ball on the offensive end. It's not a hard formula, but it is hard because South Carolina makes it so challenging. Not a complicated formula, not complicated. but it is difficult to pull off. Well, you just got <laughs> you just got to handle hard better. <laughs> You're right, complicated. but they will wear you out from start to finish as they have done today against UCLA. And Gina Conti, the four-year starting point guard for Wake Forest, who was injured last year, didn't get to play. She will also be finishing her career, and it's been a brilliant one for her. She's gonna have a degree from Wake Forest and a degree from UCLA. That's not bad. work most of this clock if they want to. South Carolina fans anxious to get on their feet. Well, I think they want to run something for Olivia Thompson here. Just to give her another chance at three. Watkins off the bounce. That won't go. Brown has it. And the South Carolina Gamecocks are moving on to the Elite Eight. 59-43 over UCLA. South Carolina still unbeaten, still in the hunt for a back-to-back -back national championship. Three, the final, they are on to the Elite Eight for the third straight season. Aaliyah Boston, eight points and 14 rebounds. Bree Beal, Camila Cardoso, and Bree Hall all in double digits as well. And the Elite Eight matchup is set. South Carolina, the one seed, and Maryland, the two seed on Monday night, right here in Greenville. And 
and let's get you over to Angel. Well, we were talking about it yesterday. It seems like you did just create a little bit of history for yourself. You tied the school record for most wins in a season. I know the work isn't finished yet, but the work that has gone into making this point, what does it feel like? I mean, it's just really, really special. Um, thank God for it every single day, being able to put us in this position, but the crowd was great and it feels nice to make history. I feel like I have to say, welcome to Block City. Someone just took your crown and was just saying, you deserve the crown, both of you. When you're looking at how this defense was able to, again, hold the opponent under 31% from the floor, what does that mean to you? Um, I just, it means a lot because I feel like we work very hard on defense to so getting over screens and everything. So I just think we do a great job each and every day. As a team, it's not just two people seven seniors on this roster. What do you think it took for you guys to even win this game and continue in the Elite Eight? You know, just being locked in, but I think everybody steps up. I mean, Bree Beal and both the Brees today played spectacular games, hitting big shots, um, playing great on charisma all night, just making it hard. Zaya killed. Everybody that stepped on the floor, I think just gave it their all. You're going to your third straight Elite Eight. No stranger for you in that department. But you will see the Maryland Terrapins on the other side. Some things that you've seen in their play and what you have to execute. Yeah, I mean, they like to get out in transition, like be physical, so we just have to be ready for that. Camille, I'm going to ask you the same thing. When you're looking at Maryland, you have the size to match. What do you think you guys can apply on Monday night? Um, the same thing that she said. They're going to push in transition, and we just got to be ready to guard it. Congratulations, and we'll see you on Monday. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Final score today, South Carolina winner over UCLA 59 to 43.